Welcome to the Brook Trout Homestead. Today, we're going to be talking about where we came from, kind of where we are now, and how we got there. Let's go. Um, so as you know, every time you start something, it always looks totally different than when you get to a different place. Like you're always growing, you're always progressing, you're always figuring out better ways to do things, better methods and stuff. So that's kind of what we wanted to share with you all today was kind of where we started, um, how our yard was, uh, the way the property was when we got it, because a lot of y'all see it now and y'all see it and you're like, oh wow, and man, that's amazing. Look how beautiful it is, but. <laughs> a um, lot of hard work. Yes, and a lot of moving things and adjusting things. A lot of mistakes. A lot. Yeah, we make mistakes, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> anyways, we're gonna go, uh, so we're gonna go over a couple of the changes that was made over the years um, some more drastic than others. Um, some of them, like I said, we just learned through mistakes and trying to figure out the best method and the best location for things. All right, so let's put up the first picture. Okay, so what you're seeing is when we first moved in. Well, actually a little bit after because that fence was not there. So right in front of the tree that, you can kind of see the jagged line on the ground. Um, that's where the fence was originally and the fence was terrible guys like the people who lived here before us they hoarded a lot of landscaping material bricks and things so we had a lot of cleanup because they did not do a lot of the cleanup no and we had a lot of taking things down although the fence was already kind of falling down um it was just a lot of work and my husband and some of his friends and family helped us get that fence up um, they did it completely themselves, and so we extended the garden area because we already knew that part of the yard was going to be our garden. And as you can see, we had beautiful grass. I don't remember what kind of grass it was. It was like Bermuda. Probably I Bermuda. Think. That's probably why we're in our <laughs> situation now. But yeah, so that's kind of where we started. This next picture was when we decided to put our first raised beds in. Yeah, that was... That was the first major step I think we did there, um, which also in that picture, you can see the apple tree that we planted uh, right there on, I guess, the left-hand side, my right as I'm standing in the picture. Um, that's one of the other additions that we made to the garden at this time. And as you can tell, we still have a lot of green grass. I mean, this was way before we even got to the Back to Eden method. Yeah, we, we definitely, that's kind of where we're coming into our first mistake. Um, we ended up going to Home Depot, buying bags of black cow manure, yep. um, which we do enjoy that one. That one's fine. Um, but also bags of topsoil. Yeah. So we mixed topsoil with the black cow, and I'm pretty sure we had more bags of topsoil than we did black cow anyway. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. Our ratio was way off. Oh, man. So, to the next picture, you're going to kind of see a little bit. Yep. Um, we filled up our beds. We put in our plant starts that we bought from big box stores. I don't even think we went to nurseries at the time. I'm not sure. Most, the majority yeah, of them were so. big box stores. Um, the beds, what were they made of? Uh, those are two by eights, I think. But cedar? Um... Uh, no, pine. pine. Two by eight. Okay. I think, yeah, it's pine. Okay, so that's what we ended up getting. Um, and so it, everything looks well, right? Now, this is our wildflower garden. The start of it. The start of it. We were so excited. I went outside. I took a shovel. Well, for probably a month, I was hounding my beautiful husband. I took a shovel to it. And um, the thing is, she doesn't understand. <laughs> I know. He was so busy. I, I know. That, and I pulled up all the turf from the raised beds yes. that we did. And taking up turf in our yard was not easy. The grass was very well established. And I learned. So it was a lot of work. So I kept telling her I'll get to it when I get time to and, and all this. So she got motivated one day and got out there and she figured out real quick that it's not But I did easy. do it. I did a rectangular, the whole rectangular shape. And then he yeah. came after me and he was like, I'm going to finish. 
I'm going to do a better job. Even though he didn't say that, but he ended up doing a better job. The design. And he did like a B design, which was kind of cool. And we used the pretty little stones on the edge. I didn't really have a huge plan for it. But um, I just knew I wanted to grow wildflowers. So I brought some seeds and just kind of threw them down. Yeah, and I think that soil there we did better on too. We I did better soil there, yeah. I think that was actual compost that right. we bought and filled up that with. So it was really good soil, better than our raised beds right. that we did. So. so in the next picture, <laughs> this is the only picture I could find with, you know, kind of looking like what it looked like. like the, <laughs> But like so the it has the words on there because I had posted it on social media, which how embarrassing, guys. Look at the soil. It's so terrible. It yeah. was so compact, so dense. The plants only look good because I bought them. Yeah. <laughs> I did not grow those there. They were from like people or nurseries. Yeah, it was probably about a quarter inch of like a crust on the top of that soil. It that was get like a little, hard. A little close up. That's our son. How adorable was he? But look at the dirt. Yeah. Oh, it was terrible. Like it, was. it literally was terrible. And thankfully we found out quickly. We're like, you know what? This isn't working. I'm, I'm pretty sure the aha moment was when I tried to plant green beans and none of them germinated. And I'm like, why aren't my green beans popping up? Beans are easy. People plant these in bags at school. Yeah. And then I dug in the soil, which was hard to dig in. And I found the green beans germinated, but like super hard and stuck together. It was terrible. Yeah, they couldn't break through the, like I said, that crust that was on there. Because it was right. so hard and compacted that... The seeds couldn't break through. The growth couldn't come through the, the crust of it. So it germinated, but it pretty much just went up, curled down, and mm -hmm. that was it. So what we ended up doing is I went out there. I bought some organic all-purpose fertilizer because I thought that's what would help. And little, but probably a square foot at a time, I was just putting fertilizer in just trying to make sure that these plants would grow. I was trying to like soften the dirt. I thought I did like this amazing thing and I added eggshells. Oh, and I did have some old potting mix. So I added that as well, I'm pretty sure. So we did soften it up a little bit, but we were not, we, we made more mistakes after and I'll show you in a bit. So as you can see, our bed is still dense. Yeah. But things are growing because the fertilizer is there. I'm watering it and things are growing. Wow, look at those tomatoes. So guess what I did? I added miracle grow. Woo! That's <laughs> I a didn't, good stuff. Oh man, I added all purpose organic fertilizer. Remember? Then I wasn't happy enough and I kept listening to people online and they're like, Put some miracle grow. Put some miracle grow. It's the best. I should have known when I opened the pack and it was like blue, blue stuff. And then yeah. they're like, oh, be careful with this. You know, it's toxic. It's hazardous. <laughs> and, you know, keep away from your face. I'm like, I should have known. I really should have. But I didn't really care. I wanted things to grow. So we threw miracle grow on there. And there's the wildflower garden. Um, it started doing great because it had better soil. Yeah. Um, but the yeah. problem was, as you can see on the back, I added sunflowers. Sunflowers are fine. I love sunflowers, but the variety of sunflowers I added were very was terrible. It, I added the common sunflowers, the ones that blow in the wind here in Texas and fall wherever they fall. And then they get huge and like there's like 10 heads to them and their seeds drop everywhere. It's It yeah. was terrible. So the rest of the season, I was literally picking out hand by hand just sunflowers. Hundreds. Hundreds everywhere. Sunflowers. It was terrible. Yeah. So 2020. We're like new mindset. Yep. I watched uh, a ton of videos. Um, Back to Eden Gardening, No Dig Method, uh, Hugo Culture, Permaculture. I was like, we've got to do better. Yep. So, in this picture, he also started building 
the fence mm -hmm. that kind of separated our garden from our backyard. Yeah, so we had a dog at this time. Um, so we didn't want the dog getting in there, digging up our garden, messing it up. And we just wanted to be able to truly separate where we were working at versus the kids coming in and all that. So um, that's what I, I was building here. Those are just four by fours. Um, I ended up putting two by fours across it, um, all pine. Um, and I did do treated lumber on this just because it's a fence and it's not gonna really uh, come in contact with our beds or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I built that across there with a little gate and everything. Right. Um, still not finished with that project. There's still stuff I want to do with it, but I haven't hey, it's awesome. got to it yet. I, so. I like it. We ended up having to use chicken wire because that's all we had on hand. Yeah. But you know what? It works. It keeps the dog out yep. and it's fine. I'm happy with yeah. it. So March 7th came around. As you can see, we dumped like loads of like leaves and twigs and arborist mulch. Anything yeah. we can get our hands on that was somewhat organic, like, you know, just natural, we poured it down on our yard. Well, when I say we, I did some of it, but my husband literally wheelbarreled and wheelbarreled and wheelbarreled from our garden all yeah. the way to the front yard. And then like the way, if you've watched some of our live streams, I've kind of showed you how we get there because we don't have an entryway through our fence yeah. from our garden to our front yard. So we have to walk across the yard yeah. to go to through the other side. We don't even have a hose on the garden side of the, <laughs> nope. it, it's crazy. So it, it was a lot of work and, but we, we were getting it done. Yeah. As you can see in May 22nd, things started looking so good. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I took out so much of that bad soil. Like, I don't even remember where I put it. I think I was just throwing it on the ground or something. Probably. And I was knowing me. And I, I mean, we packed that with a bunch of the arborist mulch that we received. I did so much of it. Um, just trying to fix what I messed up. Like, that soil had no life in it whatsoever. The miracle Grow completely depleted it. There was no fungi, no not, no mushrooms, no worms, no anything. It was terrible. Yeah. So highly recommend. We are not a Miracle Grow uh, channel. Nope. Um, we learned our lesson like severely, <laughs> yeah. and you know and it does it does great when you first apply it. Yeah, we had great big plants oh, as man. you can see the picture. I mean, but things just, produced. It zaps everything for the next season. It's like you're only good for the time that you're using it. You have to keep using yep. it every then, like few weeks. Yeah. You got to continue that rotation and it's not organic. It's mm -mm. it's everything else based on that. So yeah, it literally drains your soil. It zaps the stuff out of your soil to the point where you have to continuously use right. it. So it's kind of like their way of Your soil is profiting. not alive. No. There, there's, it's, it's the like, chemicals keeping it alive. It is on a tube, like just getting air pumped into it. Like it's just like, you need this machine. You know, your yeah. soil is nothing. It's terrible. Yeah. So yeah, as you can see, May 22nd, things started growing and we had our mulch together. We did not put enough mulch. No. Well, also, I I mean, on this part also, we didn't put as much compost down. Like we yeah. put the cardboard uh, and we put construction paper, but we didn't really have a lot of compost. So we really just did leaves. And then on top of the leaves, we did the mulch. So I think that too had a lot to play with. Yeah. It. I mean, we put it pretty thick. I mean, I was going Whoa. eight inches thick, but we didn't have the compost that mm -hmm. three to four inches of compost like you're supposed to have between yeah. those. So I think and here's that, the thing with that. I mean, we could only get so many loads of mulch delivered. I yeah. mean, we were not doing chip drop because they wouldn't do it in our area. So yeah. we were just calling local arborists. We were trying to hunt them down to get some mulch. Yeah. So we were getting mulch in doses. We're like, one truck here, wheelbarrowing for like a month and then... Three months later, we get another load and we're wheelbarrowing. Yeah. We, we, it was a process. It was. Um, and if you're like us, I mean, sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. And for the compost, I mean, we spent money on that. That that was not free, you know? <laughs> like, So we would have loved to do the four or five inches of compost 
on our entire garden, but yeah. it just wasn't happening. It, it couldn't, it was too much money, yeah. but we did what we could. And because the mulch was not just wood chips, it was leaves, it was twigs, it was old plants, it was broken down, just pine, just because it was such a good mix, it broke down so quick. So it added to our compost, praise God, because yeah. It, it, if it didn't do that, if we would have went and bought just bagged wood chips or something, it would have just been that wood and it would not have broken down the way the actual natural arborist mulch would have. Um, yeah. You can buy a bag mulch called native, but like I said, we had such a big area. There's no way we would have had like a hundred bags. Okay. So in the next picture, um, this is where we had our... We had just recently put some cardboard down. We put flagstone to keep the cardboard there. We wet it really good and we let it sit until we got more mulch on there. Um, this is kind of how we did our garden. But right. at this, this area had already had compost, had already been grown yep. in um, last year. So I just wanted to sh put this picture in here to kind of show you what we were doing. Cardboard overlapping and we did a compost and a mulch. Um, do what you can do small areas first. Don't try to rush into things. It's best if you are able to let it sit over winter before you plant in it. Yeah. But I mean, when we started this, we didn't do that. We, we kind of, it sat for like maybe a month, if that, and then we started planting. It was a little more difficult, but we ended up, when we did the holes, we added some worm castings in each hole and that helped a lot. Yeah. Cause what what some of these pictures aren't showing um, is that pretty much from our raised beds back to where the wildflower garden was, was the only area we had mulch for a while. Right. Uh, Cause that's all the mulch that we could get at that time. So everything from the raised beds behind that wasn't even mulch for a long time. Uh, we just mulched it as we got loads and as we went. So we didn't do our whole yard in one season. I think it took probably about two two full seasons, I think, before we yeah. actually mulched everything. And we still have areas yeah. uh, that could add more mulch and, and be able to do it. So it, it's definitely a timely process. Also, and there were areas, what we forgot to say is we did mow the grass really, really yeah. low before we put the compost and the cardboard and all of that. But there were parts of the yard or that area that was a lot harder to deal with. So... That got more mulch than other parts. We kind yeah. of tried to make sure we kind of just took our battles. We're just like, okay, this part is really, really bad. Where are we growing in first? What areas need mulch for sure? Because I kind of had a layout in my head of where I wanted to grow things. Um, in the next picture, I show the rabbit manure that's helped us a ton. If yeah. you have a friend that raises rabbits or if you raise rabbits, Take full advantage of your rabbit manure. I have used those to the beds because it's a cold compost. Yep. But from what I, from my experience, if you put the manure in a worm bin first, that breaks down so well. That is your brown material. And the worms turn it into worm casting so quickly that I almost prefer that method. Even though it's a little slower than you just throwing it on the garden, um, the worms just, they just do such a great job with it. I've actually saw videos of people grinding their rabbit manure, but I'm not doing that. <laughs> so <laughs> it just, when it's in a powder form, it just gives you more nutrients yeah. faster. So that's all I'm saying. Um, there's some, a pile of mulch that we received recently yeah. and he's just standing next to it cause he's just so cute, <laughs> but he, I just wanted to show you yep. kind of how they dump it in your yard. Like he, the guy just came, backed his truck in, dumped the mulch in. We like to get it in bulk. I'm not buying bagged mulch. I rather just no. continue to hunt down arborists. We have up to this day, we have yet to pay for mulch in our yard. Yeah. We've paid for the compost right. and the dirt um, that we need, but yeah, we have not paid for a single thing of mulch and i'm thankful for that god has truly blessed us with being able to find connections and being able to find people and arborists that were willing to give it to us because it costs them to go dump it 
So really, if you can find someone to connect with them, you're actually saving them money because uh, they have to pay, I think, like 20 to 40 bucks um, every trip they go to the dump to dump the mulch. So you're actually saving them money um, by getting them to drop it off at your house. So, right. um, and like she said, the compost would have been expensive. For me to cover our yard with three to four inches of compost in the area, we, I would probably need about six to seven yards worth of compost to cover our whole garden area with that much compost. So you're looking at seven yards worth of compost and you're gonna be paying, man, probably like 40, 50 bucks a yard. So, I mean, that adds up really quick and I'm not I'm not dropping $600 on compost. Yep, no. absolutely not. Okay, so the next photo, yay! These are some of my perennials. Um, we have oregano, we have lemon thyme, we have sage, um, we have bee balm, stevia, just a bunch of different plants that I wanted to have up that area that was full sun. I knew I was going to put some plants in there that are going to last all, like every year, hopefully, or that I could just cut and go, cut and cook, and that was my little perennial area. Um, my lavender is far in the back by the little sign. Um, and I just, I love it. The mulch, I mean, the mulch has helped so much um, to retain the water that they need, the nutrients they need with the compost. Um, we really enjoy this method. Um, they're the beds. Um, that was when I was planting my onions. And also there's bee balm, nasturtium, and different things. But look at the beds. They look so happy. Yeah. You see the, the mulch. There's also hay there, rotted hay from our bedding and stuff from our rabbits and our chickens. chickens. Um, you can use so much different things for mulch. Yeah. Just It's a covering. You need the covering. Yeah. And all that stuff begins to break down anyways. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, with the hay, with the chickens, I mean, it, it's basically compost in itself. So, you put it on the ground. You don't plant in it, of course, because it's a hot mm -hmm. compost, the manure anyways. So you just throw it on the ground, let it deteriorate and go into compost right there on the ground, so. Okay, so the next picture, that's our wildflower garden. Remember the pretty white stone? <laughs> Did not last. <laughs> it didn't last and I'll tell you why. We ended up doing the mulch so thick that the stones ended up getting buried. So I was like, okay. And when we got our last load at that time, he saw all those logs and we're like, we got to do something with all these logs. Cause one of the loads was full of logs. Yeah. So we ended up doing so we ended up just outlining our uh, wildflower garden and slowly it's been breaking down yep. and it looks so good. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a natural breakdown. It's a good place for worms to stay with other bugs. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's a perfect little sanctuary for bugs and other things to stay in. So it, right. it just made sense. Um, that's me. <laughs> um, that is grass clippings. So we started saving all of our grass clippings. We have a lawnmower with a bag on it. We dump the grass clippings into our compost bin. We turn it a few times and wait till it gets hot and or broken down and then we just throw it down. Um, we're, as long as it's not, the grass is not seeding, you have nothing to worry about. Yep. Um, so I started mulching with the grass clippings. You know, as long as you have that foundation first, you can start doing all sorts of other stuff after that. Yep. Those are our onions. We had such a good harvest of onions that I just love that photo. Of course, I staged it so perfectly <laughs> because it just looked so good. And I was so proud of us. I thank the Lord. I mean, we went from very terrible soil with no nutrients, no living organisms <laughs> and no covering miracle grow just to this. And it makes me so happy. Yeah. Um, there's some more pictures of the garden. Yep. And if you look in the back of that one, you could see that black tarp. We use that too to kill the grass. Oh, yeah. Uh, so if you don't have the cardboard or you don't have anything to cover your grass, you can always go get black plastic or a black tarp or something like that and just stretch it over the area of grass to kill the grass. You leave it on there for like six months, let it completely kill the grass, and then you can remove that. Put your cardboard down when you get it and then put the mulch and con our compost and mulch and that'll help uh, kill the grass down as well. Right. So. 
Um, that was just, this is just a pretty picture of a pollinator, a butterfly. Um, we had so many. I forgot to put a picture in here of the zinnias. We had so many zinnias. It was like a zinnia forest in which brought all the pollinators to the garden. Like it was amazing. It looked like something out of some, the Dallas Arboretum, you know, yeah. <laughs> it, it was beautiful. But uh, yeah, I probably won't do that again. So in this picture, we have our wildflower garden again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it became so beautiful. Guys, do it, just do it. Um, we have a lot of natives in there i have some bulbs i have chives i had lemon balm i had all sorts of beautiful plants in there and it became like a safe haven for like all sorts of bugs <laughs> it was so it was amazing and it blows my mind every year it gets better and better and guess what flowers do they bring these insects and these insects take the pollen from our other plants they pollinate our produce we need these insects we need them um no special things we do to bring them over but plant our flowers and just make the garden feel and look pretty oh. um here we have our son he's super sweet um he loves the garden and he loves to help and water and help daddy build things yep. It's just, it's been great for the children as well. They've learned so much and our science curriculum is during springtime and summer, it's outside, it's outdoors. We're learning hands-on unit, unit studies from the things that we do and the things that we see outside, yeah. which a lot of people can't say. And uh, speaking of the zinnias, if you look in this picture from my son's feet, probably all the way to the fence, was all zinnias at one point. All the way back to that wooden box that's behind him was full of zinnias. That whole area was zinnias. <laughs> it was crazy. It completely covered that whole area. Yeah. You couldn't even see the wooden box. You couldn't see anything. And it wrapped around to the wildflower garden. You couldn't even walk to where the lavender was because the zinnias were so thick. Yeah. We're probably gonna add a picture of the zinnias. <laughs> at the end of the video or something or during. <laughs> so in this we're, this is just more photos of the production that the no dig permaculture, hookaculture, a uh, back to eating garden did because yeah. it's all they're all the same kind of concept. Yep. Um, you are wanting to nourish your soil. You want to make it better year after year. And this is what it was last year. Um, it just transformed, transformed. Mm -hmm. Totally different from the first picture. Totally. It, blow, it blows my mind. Um, then I have like a close up of our soil. Look how different it is compared to that <laughs> dense, terrible soil. <laughs> that horrible, I don't even know what to call that stuff. It was bad. It was really bad. It was horrible. And then I had him, well, it was his idea. I think it was your idea. Yeah, it was, it was his idea to put lights outside, the solar lights. So every time we went outside, we were able to just relax in the garden. I call it my prayer garden at night because it's yep. just so beautiful. And it's just a relaxing moment to just have with the Lord and to reflect on his blessings and his goodness, his sacrifice. It's just, it was just awesome. Um, more veggies. I, I can't believe how much production this garden has done for us. And it's, yep. it's changed everything. Like yeah. it's changed our way of living and eating because, you know, the more you grow, the more you pro of the process, the more you want to eat better and live better and teach people and preserve, it's it's open doors that we never really thought that would ever be opened. Yep. Um, there's the loofahs. If you grow loofahs. I don't grow loofahs. He loves growing loofahs. I don't mind growing them. I just don't <laughs> like the fact that if you're not careful with the seeds, you will be growing 100 plants the next year. Yeah. Loofahs. And it will take over everything if you don't have a big enough and strong enough trellis it tried to take over my apple tree as you see in this picture 
Yeah, it actually, that's a beautiful picture because the year before, it was literally the entire apple tree was full of loofah. I almost added a loofah picture, but the quality wasn't quite there. Yeah. Um, and then this is our final photo. I know we're ending our video. If you sat here long enough with us, we appreciate <laughs> you deeply. 2017 to 2021. Huge difference. Huge difference. I mean, oh my goodness. I can't even believe it. Like, you can do this. Yep. We did it. You can do this. And I know a lot of you are on a larger scale, or maybe some of you are on a smaller scale. Whichever you choose, you could always start little by little. Yep. You could always just work your way because we had some stumbling blocks Yep. and we managed to make it through and continue researching, continue learning so many different homesteaders on YouTube yep. that will teach you so many great things. I try to stick with permaculture. I try to stick with um, just the organic method, but even people who are not quite in that method, they can get there full of knowledge and full of tips mm. and ways to just make it work. Um, we incorporate loads of different things from different videos. Yeah, and another thing is don't, don't be afraid to try. Don't be afraid to just try because the worst thing that can happen is what? You fail. And if you fail, you learn something and then you can try something else. Like you try to grow a plant. Well, it doesn't work successfully or you don't like what it produces it doesn't taste right then guess what you know you don't like that plant so then you can try another one or you try a certain variety and it doesn't work like you want it to go on to the next variety try something different like don't be afraid to try things because if you never try mm -hmm. you'll never know and that's one thing we've always done is just and like if we're going to try it let's try it let's do it um i think the only thing we really just went head on into is the the back to eat method like we just she committed and she talked me into it. And I was like, you know, they what have we said, got to lose? They said less work. And it less is. Less work. A lot less work. It's hard in the beginning because you have to get everything down. You got to get the yeah. foundation. With anything, with life, you have to have a solid foundation. Yeah. And once you get that foundation solid. You're good. It works. It starts getting better. And you start doing little here, little there. You know, upkeep, praise God. But it works and you start to see all of your labor, like all the things you did just flourish, the production. Yep. So I do encourage you guys to stick to what you feel is best. And for us, what is best has been the organic method, has been the natural method. Mm. Even though my foundation at first was not organic, in which I understand this, <laughs> I made mistakes. My soil now is full of nutrients, yep. full of worms, and you can have that too. Thank you guys for watching. We love y'all. God bless you, and we pray for you guys often. God bless. Bye. Bye.